What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here, as always, on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today I'm going to be closing out the John Wick saga with 2019's John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum, starring Keanu Reeves, Halle Berry, Ian McShane, Lawrence Fishburne, Asia Kate Dillon, Lance Reddick, and Angelica Houston. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here today on another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. Thank you for joining me for the trilogy of John Wick. We're going to close it out today with John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. Um, before I get into it, let me go ahead and take just a moment to, like I've done for the other two, give a quick shout out to my homie Jamel, who's the one who hooked me up with the trilogy for Christmas last year. We had a gift exchange at work, and he ended up with my name. He gifted me the three-disc trilogy set, so I was able to view these, watch them, review them for you guys. So thank you to him. Today's episode is also being featured on the Jeff Meacham Network. So quick thank you to Jeff for allowing me to bring this to you guys in the time slot that is normally dad's not always on wrestling. You know, every other Friday, you either get a dad's or you get Renegades Reviews. And today you just happen to get Renegades Reviews. So thank you, Jeff, for allowing me to come here on your channel and cover John Wick Chapter 3. And let's get right into it, shall we? Our movie begins pretty much right where the last one left off. John Wick is running through Manhattan using every minute of time possible before his excommunicado status goes into effect for the killing of high table member Santino D'Antonio on the grounds of the New York Continental Hotel. As you guys remember, there is no conducting business, no killing allowed on the grounds of the Continental. John broke those rules at the end of the last film, and now this film, he's basically suffering the consequences of that. He goes to the New York Public Library, and he finds a book, and hidden behind a picture of Baba Yaga is a marker, a crucifix, and a couple of gold coin pieces. He's, in, he's confronted in the stacks by a hitman by the name of Ernest before his hour is up. Now, if you remember, Winston gave him one hour before the excommunicado status would go into effect. So Ernest is trying to rush this a little bit, figures who's going to know. John tries to tell him that he still has time, but Ernest doesn't care, and a fight breaks out in the library. John is injured, and he ends up going to an underworld doctor for treatment. Now, the doctor initially doesn't want to help John because of the excommunicado status that's going into effect. But John tells him, you know, please help me. I still have a few minutes. So the doctor relents. And he attempts to try to stitch John up. And the doctor, he's going through the process, and he gets about halfway through. And the clock gongs, and John's status is in effect. So he's unable to complete the task for John. John finishes stitching himself up, relieving the doctor of any wrongdoing. And then he shoots the doctor in order to try and save him from any repercussions. As he leaves the doctor, he's pursued quickly by various gangs and assassins, all looking to claim the $14 million bounty that's on his head. He's able to defeat the first wave of assassin attempts, killing men in antique stores, a stable, and even on horseback. John goes and he meets up with a woman known as the Director 
who is the head of a top secret Ruska Roma crime syndicate. And John requests safe passage to Casablanca with their assistance. The director doesn't want to help him because of the excommunicado status. But John is wielding this crucifix. So the director reluctantly helps John. John once was a part of their organization. And that's how he has the crucifix. The crucifix ask, acts as like a ticket. And you take the crucifix and your ticket has been punched. And while this is going on, an adjudicator of the high table seeks out Winston, the manager of the Continental Hotel, as well as the Bowery King. The adjudicator informs both men that they have seven days to step down from their positions. Winston because he gave John an hour head start, and the Bowery King, because he supplied John with ammunition in order to carry out his desires to murder Santino. The adjudicator goes and she hires Zero, who is an independent Japanese assassin. Zero goes to the director and stabs her through both of her hands as penance for defying the high table. When John arrives in Casablanca, John finds and meets up with Sophia. And Sophia is a former friend of John's and the current manager of the Moroccan Continental Hotel. John hands Sophia a marker, which she had obtained by helping protect her daughter and requests that she takes him to see the elder. And the elder is the only person that is above the high table. Despite whatever the high table decrees and says, the elder can overrule. So reluctantly, Sophia takes John to see her boss, Barada, who tells John how to find the elder. He basically has to wander the desert until he can't walk anymore. And in return for the information, Barada requests one of Sophia's dogs as payment. Sophia refuses, so Barada shoots the dog. However, the dog survives thanks to the fact that it's wearing a bulletproof vest. Sophia then tries to kill Barada, but at John's suggestion, she only shoots him in the leg, wounding him instead of killing him. They're able to fight out of the Casbah by killing droves of Barada's henchmen, and they drive into the desert where Sophia leaves John so he can begin his journey to find the elder. Seven days have passed at this point, and Zero and the Adjudicator confront the Bowery King. The Bowery King refuses to resign from his position, so Zero has his students slaughter the Bowery King's men. Zero then slices the Bow Bowery King seven times as a penance. Zero then slices the Bowery King seven times as a penance. Meanwhile, back in the desert, John collapses and he's picked up and brought to see the elder. See, the trick with the elder is that you don't find him. The elder finds you if he chooses to. John tells the elder, look, I want to live. I want to live so that I can keep the memory of the love that I had with my wife alive. So the elder, being a fair man, agrees. He will forgive John if John agrees to kill Winston. And in addition to killing Winston, John must continue to serve the high table for the rest of his life. John agrees to the terms of the deal, then cuts off his ring finger and offers his wedding ring to the elder as an act of fealty. 
John returns to New York, where he's almost immediately attacked by Zero and his students before he can get to the Continental Hotel and the sanctuary that it provides. John is able to reach the steps of the Continental where Sharon, the concierge of the Continental, is able to stop Zero before he can execute John on Continental grounds. You know, Zero tries to point out to, to Sharon that John is excommunicado. And he agrees that while John is excommunicado, you are not, and you're still about to murder a man on the continental grounds. So if you don't want to be excommunicado as well, you won't pull that trigger. John is able to get a meeting with Winston, and Winston attempts to reason to John, telling him not to die as the Baba Yaga, but as a man who was loved and knew how to love. The adjudicator shows up, and Winston refuses to resign from his position. She then asks John if he plans to assassinate Winston, carrying out the terms of the deal that he made with the elder. And John tells her no, he's not going to do that either. So the adjudicator makes a phone call and declares the Continental Hotel deconsecrated which means that business can now be conducted on continental grounds. No punishments will be dished out if anybody kills anybody on the continental premises. The adjudicator sends Zero and an army of high table enforcers to kill John and Winston. Winston provides John with access to weapons as well as the assistance of Sharon and his staff in order to help John in taking out the enforcers. Once the enforcers have been dispatched, Zero ambushes John along with some of his students. John takes out all but two of Zero's students because the two surrender to John after being soundly defeated. They realize what's going on, and rather than succumbing to death, they surrender to John with honor. So John allows them to live. Zero then confronts John and admits to being a fan of John's work prior to the circumstances that led Zero to have to kill him. The two men engage in combat, with John becoming the victor, after stabbing Zero and leaving him to die. The adjudicator agrees to a parlay with Winston, and Winston offers the high table fealty, pointing out the fact that he has only shown strength throughout this whole ordeal instead of weakness. John shows up, and Winston shoots John multiple times, calling him to fall off the roof. The New York Continental Hotel is consecrated once again, so all rules back into effect, no killing on continental premises. Winston returns to his management position. Meanwhile, John is picked up and delivered to an underground bunker in the sewers where the Bowery King is still alive and waiting. The Bowery King begins to vent his anger towards the high table in John's presence, you know, just ranting and raving and getting all the anger off of his chest. The Bowery King then pauses and asks John if he feels the same way. And John replies with a simple, yeah, as our film draws to its close. You know, much like the other two films in this series, man, this was action-packed, testosterone-fueled, bang, bang, shoot him up, kill the bad guys, brutal kills. Dare I say some of the kills in this movie were worse than some of the ones in the other two. There's one scene where dude got stabbed through the eye, and I've seen many a horror film, but even I was, like, cringing at that one a little bit, like, ugh. But this film, 
is just as good as the other two in the saga. I can honestly say that I am sad that it has taken me this long to see the John Wick films because these three movies were awesome. And with chapters four and five coming in the future, as well as a spinoff film called Ballerina about a ballerina character that we see in this film, supposed to be continuing her story. I'm definitely curious to see these movies as they are released and update my thoughts on the saga as it expands from a trilogy into a full-blown franchise. When it comes to my rating on John Wick 3, Parabellum, it was definitely better than part two, in my opinion, because if you remember, I mentioned in part two that there were a few times I got distracted, looked at my phone, whatnot. None of that happened this time. I was definitely caught up in the film. Um, it wasn't better than the original, but it was better than part two. So I'm going to put it at four stars out of five, just like I ranked the original. One of the few films were the third in the series is just as good as the original, right on par there, in my opinion. I loved Lawrence Fishburne as the Bowery King. I liked the addition of Halle Berry. I liked where they went with Ian McShane's character, Winston. Um, Lance Reddick, first time I actually named him in the credits. He's been in all three movies as Sharon, but this is the first time where his character really expanded and you got to see him do some stuff. I was thoroughly impressed with the development of the characters of Winston and Sharon and the addition of Halle Berry. I thought it was a nice touch. Don't forget to get out there on social media. Get those hashtags trending for me. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. And of course, hashtag Jeff Meacham. And let's not forget the ever popular hashtag shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Don't forget to do what that commercial just told you. Get out there. Go to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network. Get you all your official merchandise of the Jeff Meacham Network, your logo T-shirts, including your Royal Rumble-inspired logo, your L.A. Kings-inspired logo, your Back to the Future-inspired logo, your Meachamania shirts with your two-time Hall of Famer-inspired, Hulk Hogan-inspired design, your Talk Wrestling shirts, Dad's Not Always on Wrestling, Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and so much more. Tomorrow, right here, back exclusively on the Casa D18 Studios channel, when I will be bringing you yet another installment of Renegade's Reviews. Make sure you tune in as I begin another trilogy this month, The Mighty Ducks. This one is going to be a fun one. And I'm going to be joined all three days of the Mighty Ducks trilogy by the West Coast professor himself, Jeff Meacham. So make sure you're right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel to check out all of that. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what do you guys think of John Wick Chapter 3. If you're watching the live stream, leave your thoughts in the comments over here. If you're watching on demand, Leave your thoughts in the comment box below. 
You know me. I'll get back to you. I appreciate each and every one of your guys' support. Don't forget to tune in to the Jeff Meacham Network this weekend, immediately following the Mighty Ducks and D2 The Mighty Ducks reviews for Jeff's WrestleMania watch-alongs and coverage. You're not going to want to miss that WrestleMania weekend this weekend, baby. The Super Bowl of Wrestling. So thank you for being here and checking us out, and I will see you guys next time.